I am Emily Kate and I'm coming to you from Berlin in Germany. This is my little space on YouTube where I talk about things I've been making. So it's mainly a knitting podcast, but I also talk about sewing and at some point in the future some other crafty things I've been up to. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as well um, as Emily Kate made this. So thank you to all my subscribers coming back to me and having a view and hello to anybody new. Um, thank you so much for all of your subscriptions. It's made the world, made the world, makes, means the world to me. We we'll get there eventually. I'm actually incredibly hot wearing a lot of knitwear right now. So apologies. So yes, thank you. <laughs> Hope you enjoy and let's get cracking. So what am I wearing? This, this is my newbie, my finished object, my surprise finished object. I'll explain a little bit uh, later why it's a surprise. But this is my Felix pullover by Amy Christophers, or Christophers. Um, I'll actually insert some pictures, I think, because it's quite hard to show you. But this is my beautiful new finished piece. It's made using Let Lopi in a rust heather colour. I'll find the number and uh, put it down in the description box below. Anything that I talk about, it will be down there. So I've lost all of my notes that I have like, subtly put here. So it's easy to see them and then I've mucked them all up. So this has a tale of woe and success. Despite the fact that everybody says, oh, it's so easy, it just flies off the needles, I managed to do every mistake that I've never done before, all in this uh, pullover. Theoretically, it is easy, but as I have been talking about, and I'm sure you, if you've watched my other episodes, you'll be like, oh, we know, Emily, we know. <laughs> I'm trying to learn, I have basically succeeded to learn how to knit and purl Norwegian style, but I've always just done knitting and purling or knit two together. I've never done lace work or using that technique. I always do lace work with my English knitting style. And I thought, ah, oh, it's only a little bit. Let's give it a go. Oh, oh, that was the worst, the worst idea. So I basically had to start this yoke three times. And I am not somebody that tends to rip out. I just go, ah, it's be fine. But seeing as this is literally the like, center piece, the masterpiece of this basically otherwise just plain stockinette sweater, I thought I should probably actually make sure this does look like it's supposed to look. So I started it, has some um, short rows, and instead of the wrap and turn method, I thought I'll do the German short rows instead because I prefer them. I can't remember why, but I've done two jumpers that had the wrap and turn and it was horrible and I hated it. And then I did another pattern and thought, oh, I don't know why I found short rows so difficult. And then realized it's because it was just a different technique. And there is a video online that I can't remember who it's by, but she basically teaches you how to do the German short rows and how to change a pattern from, if, you, if it recommends the wrap and turn, how to change it to German short rows. So that's what I did, but unknowingly, I the way that the stitch looks, where you basically just tug at the stitch and it makes two um, legs for the stitch, that's exactly what it looks like when you do a pearl yarn over wrong <laughs> with uh, um, the Norwegian style. Because in Norwegian purling, your yarn is always at the back. You're knitting, it's at the back, you're purling, it's at the back. Whereas in English style, you always bring the yarn forward. But that baffled me a little bit. But I thought that I understood it when I did the yarn over, but obviously I did not understand this. And I basically just added stitches. I just added another stitch, but there wasn't the hole that you get when you do a yarn over. To be honest, I don't know exactly what I did wrong, but it was horrible, <laughs> horribly wrong. And I also didn't use any markers to show where my short rows were. So when I got to the end where I thought the short row was, and I knitted it together, I was actually knitting together the um, what should have been my yarn overs, and the whole jumper just looks so bizarre, and so uh, I just ripped it out. 
I didn't have enough stitches because I'd been knitting them together. So that was ripped out. And then I started again and I hadn't noticed that it was my pearls that had, was causing this issue. So I did my short rows and I added my stitch markers so I knew that I was turning at the correct point. So the only thing that was going wrong were my yarn overs. So then I ripped it all back again. <laughs> But there is a kind of blessing in disguise here. I have never ever used a safety line before in knitting and I have no idea why I decided I would try it because I've never done it before. But boy oh boy am I glad that I did this because I added a safety line that went just after I finished the ribbing. So all the times all the times, those two times, that I had to rip back this whole yoke. I just ripped back straight away to the ribbing, so I didn't have to get lost and confused and try and attach all the stitches, which is what happens any other time that I try to knit and rip it out and it all goes wrong. So the positive of this is safety lines are excellent and I'm going to use them forever and ever. Thank you safety lines. Negative is it went wrong twice. But another positive is I learned that uh, my purling was wrong with the uh, yarn overs, so now I know not to do that. To be honest, I just did every section here in uh, English style knitting and then returned to purl, uh, to purl, then I returned to Norwegian knitting and then back to English. Long story short, <laughs> here's my pullover. Um, I don't think I did any adjustments except I made the sleeves a bit more like bracelet length because I cannot stand having sleeves it, like when I'm washing up or doing something. It's like always there, it's just always in the way. So I like it a little bit shorter. And I also made it um, one inch shorter. So I think you were supposed to go from the armpit down nine inches or no, 10 inches, and I stopped at nine inches. And then you're supposed to do, I can't remember, like 12 or 13 rows of stockinette. Wow, ah, not stockinette, ribbing on the bottom. But um, I just did, I think, eight. I just basically did the same. So if it was eight there, I did eight there, and eight there or something. I hope that wasn't too confusing. <laughs> I actually I'm gonna have to take it off because I am so hot. This is Let Lobi, so it's Icelandic yarn and it's incredibly warm. Okay, wardrobe change complete. <laughs> Sorry, I got way too hot. There is one thing that confused me, other than the mass confusion. The gauge. And if any of you have made this, and I know that plenty of people have, please explain to me. The gauge. Did anyone actually get 14 stitches in there across? Like, it's like 14 in 10 centimetres. And it's on, what is it on? Oh dear, I haven't got it written down. It's on 6 millimetre needles, I think. And if you look on the Iztex uh, website, it says you get 18 stitches on 5 millimetre needles. So how is it possible that you get 14 on 6 millimetre needles? Um, so basically my gauge is about 17 stitches on 6mm and if I had got 14 I would have had to use like a 8 or 10mm needle to knit it with and then it would just be so gappy. So I basically thought I'm quite small, it has a lot of positive ease, I'll just do the smaller size. So this is the extra small and I just did it with my 5mm needles or six millimeter needles and did everything all the same numbers I didn't increase extra or take anything out it's probably a little bit tighter than if you look at the pictures online but I was baffled how anybody would get 14 stitches with that loopy but there it is gosh that felt like a very long winded explanation of what I'm wearing <laughs> so Calm thoughts. Finished objects, and I'm so excited to tell you 
I finished. <laughs> I finished these. I talked about them in my first episode, I believe, and probably my second. And they just took me so long, but I finished them. So, as I have mentioned multiple times, I'm sorry if you've already heard this, but these were supposed to be the Magic Toadstool Socks by Stone Knits, and they went wrong because my colour work gauge was off, which seems to be a theme now that <laughs> I listen to it. But my tension was off and I basically just couldn't get my heel to go over like the um, pattern. And I couldn't bring myself to rip them out, so I just kept going and I could turn them into mittens, the fingerless mittens. And I, at the time I was making some other mittens, the uh, cloud first mittens, so I just used the thumb gusset pattern and inserted that in. So here they are. And admittedly, they don't look like super fitted, like shaped, but that's because they were designed to be socks. And um, the they're very warm actually. It's the Phil Kalana Arveta Classic sock yarn, and they have been blocked. It's interesting because when I wear them like this, that's like they stay, <laughs> they stay put. But I have worn them out, and with my body heat. Like they expand, which technically it doesn't sound very good, but when it was quite cold, because it expanded, it just like covered my fingers more and more, so they stayed toasty warm. So bonus, bonus points for that. Um, yeah, I really like them, actually. I was thinking, oh, I'll probably just make them, but they won't get worn that much. I think they will. So here they are. They... Where's my information? <laughs> I knitted them on a 2.25 needle, so I think when I make them, because I will make them again, socks this time, fingers crossed, I will probably stay with 2.25, maybe go up to a 2.5 or a 2.75 for the mushrooms, and then go back to the 2.25. And then I shall hopefully have matching mittens and socks. So that is them. So my next two objects are, they are finished objects, but I didn't finish them recently. They are finished objects from Christmas that I made for my husband. But I just found them downstairs. Um, when I made them, I just knitted them, gave them to him. He was like, oh, it's a bit scratchy. Uh, and he didn't, he didn't wear it enough. He didn't wear it enough. but. Then I discovered blocking. <laughs> I had never really learned about blocking at that point. Now I think they'll be soft and so he'll wear, the, wear it a bit more. But this is the, the Able Cable Hat by Karl Steinmetz. It's an Aran weight pattern and this one I used the we, not we, West Yorkshire Spinners Aaron weight, um, the Croft, I believe it's called, and my husband loves Brussels sprouts, so I made this because it looked like a Brussels sprout, and I think now it's a bit softer, but I have since learned that I actually don't really feel the prickle factor of yarn that much, which to me I, it's like an unexpected blessing, because I wear Let Lopi next to skin and it's, it's fine. And this to me is really soft and nice, but my husband is like, oh, it's so itchy. So hopefully it's not itchy anymore and uh, he will wear it. I have a hair clip in, so I can't actually put it on, but I will insert some pictures so you can see it a bit better. Um, they are actually not cables. It looks like cables, but they are fake cables made using like a series of increases and decreases. I have actually made myself a cabled hat, but it just went, it didn't go wrong. Like it was beautiful, I really like it. But the yarn choice was wrong because it was probably my, it was definitely my first hat, but it was the Petite Wool by We Are Knitters and it just got so big, it was hilariously large. Like you could stretch it out to like there. It expanded. I, I have to pull it out 
which breaks my heart a little bit because it was my first cabling, my first hat, and I was really happy with it, but it's gonna have to be frogged. But I might just use the pattern and use some other yarn. Uh, thing is, I just still don't quite understand what yarn will stretch and which won't. It's, um, it's not alpaca, and I have used alpaca before, and I was told that would stretch, and it did not stretch, and it was like this micro mini jumper, <laughs> and I thought, it's fine, I'll stretch. It didn't stretch. But that hat did. So I will either make myself one of these, or make myself the other hat, and then maybe I'll show that to you next time. So, what did I use? I used 5mm um, needles cast on 80 stitches, I think. There are two sizes for a smaller, which was this, and a larger one had more stitches, 90 something, I think. Um, so that was that, and my other present for him last year, as you can see, I started knitting last year, so, or ju yeah, the very beginning of last year, so naturally everybody's Christmas presents were knitted, <laughs> whether they wanted it or not. So these are some mittens which look absolutely minute, but they're very stretchy, so I know they fit his hands, but they actually fit my hands better. They fit his, but they do stretch. So these are Ben's Mitts by Dana Nelms, or Dana Nelms. They're fingerless. This is actually a modification that I did because they're actually, I folded these down. So it looks ridiculous, I know, but when there's a man's hand in here, his fingers come up here. But the idea was when it's kind of cold, but not really cold, he could just roll them down and have his fingers so he could play on his phone. But then if it got really cold, he could just go, oh, and keep his fingers warm. It looks silly, but it functioned. And he's the kind of guy that wouldn't wear gloves because then he can't get his thumb out or his fingers and use them. But this functions well for him because he can just cover his fingers and then uncover them. So, unfortunately, because he's him, he he destroyed this one already. This this one has got bits of yarn coming out, and I've I've always been so delicate with my knitting that I've never actually had anything snag yet. Touch wood. Uh, so I have to figure out how to fix this. But, but yeah, this is also the um, the Croft, but the DK weight by We West. Um, I keep saying We Are Knitters, West Yorkshire Spinners. So slightly, I thought the colours would match, but uh, they're just slightly off. But it's fine. It's fine. The pattern is what I actually really liked. It's um, a farrow, farrow rib. I cannot remember how I did it, but it's a free pattern, I think, so have a look for it on Ravelry. I'll link it down below. Um, it was really, it was really nice knit. I really enjoyed it. So, they are my finished objects that I have finished <laughs> last year, and just washed them up, just blocked them, and now they're all soft and lovely and ready for the autumn. Although I'm sitting here sweating buckets because it's so hot, <laughs> but it has been getting colder, so they will be used very shortly. And uh, now that I've changed, I'll just briefly mention this is my ranunculus. So it's got, I've got buttons underneath which are sticking through. This is my ranunculus um, sweater, which I turned into a summer tee. I talk about it on my episode four, I think. Could be five, but I think it's four. So if you want to know any more details about it, check out that video. So, works in progress. I have got my Maya cardigan still on the go. There was a little bit of a woe, another woe. And we're back. So my Maya cardigan, I just needed like 11 rows or something of the blue and I ran out just before I needed to start my yoke and then 
I couldn't find it. I went through every single nook and cranny to find one more ball. There was no ball to be found. So I had to go online and buy some more. And if any of you have been trying to buy any uh, Letlopi, you'll know it's incredibly hard to find. All the colours are basically sold out everywhere. But I was so lucky. I found somewhere that had one more ball of the blue. So I started my yoke two days ago. So I've been waiting about a week for the yarn to get here. And so not much progress from the last time you saw, but for me it's a lot because it is colour work. So here is my Maya by Helena Magnusson. It's not fully stretched out because the, cord, the uh, cable isn't long enough. But, oh, it's so beautiful. So this is coming along nicely. I'm a little nervous that it won't fit because I thought I could block, out, block it out a bit. But I washed my um, Felix pullover. It really didn't get any bigger when I washed that. So we'll see. Hopefully these arms will stretch out a little bit. But I've still got the rest of the yoke to go about 20 more rows, I think. And then I have the um, button band to attach around the neck. And then cutting, sticking. So I'm so excited to seek and finish this and wear it and be oh, happy. So yeah, that's that. If you want to know any more about this, I have talked about it in probably all but one of my podcasts, so have a browse. And, oh, <laughs> another woe, another woe of knitting. If any of you are following me on Instagram, you'll see that I got in a pickle with my Humla Bee shawl. And to be honest, I have absolutely no idea what happened. I make I have made so many lace work items with that exact stitch pattern, this central double decrease that goes through, and I've never had a problem. And I started knitting this shawl, and as I looked at it, I thought, something's not right. <laughs> Basically, the central double decrease, which should be like the spine of the shawl and go, go all the way up, was going like this to the side. And as I mentioned in my last episode, I think, I had to cast on 400 stitches for the whole thing and it took me three days because it's like this special pico edge and it just took me a long time because it was the action, the repeated action was really hurting my hands. So over three evenings I managed and then I started doing back and forwards. So again, 400, 400 knitting, purling and after about eight rows or something, I noticed this and there was just no way that I could rip that out. So I thought, ah, I can try like get a new skill. And um, like, what do you call it? It's like when you unknit just this little section. But the problem is that it's at an angle, like it's the bottom of a triangle and you're increasing or decreasing. So I basically got in a bit of a mess, tried to put a safety line in it and drop down but the safety line and the decreases all just turned to this mass bundle of yarn spaghetti. And I had to try and knit it and knit it in pattern back to how it should be. To be fair, it didn't go well. But the other, I, one part of me thinks, oh, you should just start all over again because it's not perfect. Like it doesn't look fantastic. The other part of me thinks, it's just the bottom part of a shawl and who's actually going to walk up to me and be like, oh, you've gone wrong on that on your shawl. Shouldn't wear that. No one. And if they did, then they're not worth the time of day. But I've made very little progress on this because I uh, got distracted by my pullover, the Felix. And actually, there's another story behind that one, so I will go back to that. So. This is, and I might have to insert some pictures because you probably won't see. 
Mm. Is it gonna work? Basically, this is the section, and I managed to get it to like all align again. But it just looks a bit of a mess, to be honest. But I'm hoping some blocking will figure it, fix it. And then that's like the tiniest section of a whole shawl. So hopefully the mass of shawl loveliness will um, keep anybody's attention from the bottom. <laughs> so this shawl is the Fibre Tales Humlebee shawl and the yarn is John Arben yarn, Devonia, in Amber Blaze. But I won't go on any more about it because I'm going to talk about it when it's finished. Because that is going to happen. That day is going to come. <laughs> Hopefully soon. So, acquisitions. When I bought my blue yarn for my Maya cardigan, I had to buy some more to get the, pet, the um, postage to come up. Because otherwise you're paying like three quid for a ball of yarn and then six quid postage. That's just silly. So, I purchased... I made a purchase of some beautiful yarn. This is the Istex Plutilope. So it's an unspun Icelandic yarn and I have never used it before. I've seen a lot of people who have and it's basically unspun so if you pull at it, it will come apart. And then if you, if it happens, you can just spit splice it together. So you can get your hands wet with water or spit and then just rub it together and it will reattach. So I purchased this to make the, what is it, the <laughs> Melody Hoffman is the designer of the tulip pullover or tulip sweater. So that's what I'm going to do with that yarn. I haven't decided if I want to get some silk mohair to go with it as recommended in the pattern. I've never used silk mohair before. So I'm a bit unsure if I want to, because it's going to make it really warm, and that's going to be warm enough as it is. Uh, so I'll make up my mind a bit later. But I'm very excited to try this new yarn one. Um, and before I wrap this up, I will just finish telling you the tale of this sweater, because it links into just general life stuff. So if you're not interested in that, then thank you very much for watching and hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you again next time and if you are sticking around I will tell you the, the tale of why I made this sweater. Basically um, I live in Germany but because of Brexit, yeah I use that word, that horrible word, because of Brexit I, I had to get a residency permit to be here. So I had an interview for it last week. It took like six or seven months to get it. And I had it on Tuesday. And oh, I just felt so nervous. I was so nervous to go. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if I'd have to prove, I don't know. When you're trying to stay in a country, you just I've watched too much stuff on um, like those Australian TV shows where you have to prove everything. <laughs> what are they called? Border control and stuff like that. It's influenced me too much. Um, basically, I was just really nervous. And then the following day, I had a dentist appointment where I was getting a filling and some something that I still can't quite figure out what he did to my mouth. And it was horrible. And I knew that as an adult, as an adult woman, I couldn't bring along a soft toy like my collection of minions or like my avocados. <laughs> I couldn't bring any toys with me, so as a comfort, an adult comforting thing, I made a sweater and I put everything else aside. I thought I need something cosy, I need something to hug me, I need something soothing and loads of people have said this just flew off their needles, so I thought, oh great, this has been on my to-do list for about a year now, now is the time. So I finished this in one week. <laughs> Admittedly, it is like six millimeter needles and it's a cropped sweater so it's not like a lace work or a color work but that's a miracle for me to make a jumper in a week but I needed I needed to finish this I needed this like comforting warm hug of love so success the night before 
my interview. I finished it and then I wore it at the then and I wore it at the dentist and then I brought it home and then I washed it and blocked it and now now it's ready. <laughs> but ah, oh, it was very comforting. As my nerves got the better of me, I just looked down at it and was like, oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> so that is my my exciting life stuff, the dentist. <laughs> Do I have anything else on my list of to talk about? Nope, that is everything. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I've inspired you in some way with some things that I've knitted. Um, what are you guys knitting on? I'd love to know. Have any of you made any of the same? I know a lot of people are making the Felix and a lot of people are making the Maya. So I'd be very interested to know what your gauges are and how you found that. Um, but in general, what are you making? Please tell me in the comments below. So thanks again and I'll see you next time. Bye!